this is a quick video just to give you an idea of how much of a difference you can make to how you look on your Zoom calls with some very simple adjustments. Now, this is really about as uh, bad as it gets in terms of the video side of things. Well, actually, it's not as bad as it gets. I've seen worse. But um, I'm sitting with very strong backlight. I'm just using my laptop's built-in camera. Um, and also what you'll be hearing on the audio is what is recorded by the laptop microphones. This is what a lot of people use on the, the video calls. It really doesn't work very well. So the first thing I'm fixing is the audio. So what you're hearing now is the audio that's coming from the small and quite discreet Bluetooth headset that I've got on. I'll drop the link below. This is a, a Bluetooth headset. Obviously, it is a particular model that you can connect and use on your computer, but you can also use on your phone. So I spend a lot of time doing calls and meetings and working from lots of different locations. I need my kit to be portable. I need my kit to be multi-purpose. This really makes a massive difference. My cat actually just meowed quite loudly. Because I've got this headset on, it has a noise cancelling microphone. Most likely you didn't actually hear that. So I've now fixed the audio and I'm going to fix the video. I have now just moved a little bit around my dining table. I'm still sitting in the same room. I'm still using my laptop camera um, and for the rest of this I will continue to use the Bluetooth headset to give you the good audio. This is now cleaner, this is getting better, the lighting is now coming from the side, I've got quite strong shadows uh, on this side of my face though so you can see me but it's, it's a little bit distracting um, and also the video quality from the built-in laptop camera isn't that great and you'll see a comparison in a moment. This is actually, it claims it's an HD webcam. This is a fairly up-to-date HP Elite book. Um, so it's by no means a crappy camera, um, but it's not all that great. What I'm now going to do, because a lot of people, uh, this background is okay, but some people want to put up the virtual background. So that's what we'll do next. What I've now done is turned on the virtual background. And this is actually a custom background that I created. It's very simple to do. Any image editing program, you can take any image that you've got. Uh, if you just Google for Zoom uh, virtual background size, then you'll find out what the dimensions are and the, the proportions. Uh, it's, uh, I believe, a 16-9 aspect ratio uh, and 1280 by 720, I believe, minimum size. But basically, you can set anything up as your background. I'm still using the laptop camera and a lot of people, you get comments, they find these, these kind of virtual backgrounds distracting. Uh, this is actually working quite well, but if I start to do this, this is where you really get the artifacting um, and you can see bits of the background behind. So anywhere where you've got gaps between things or if you've got a headset on that's got a gap, if I do that, <laughs> then you can actually see the background behind me. It's amazing how well this actually does work, but if you find that you can see the background uh, around you when you're, you're moving, things like this, or even worse, if you are wearing something which is not a strong color contrast or a strong, a just strong contrast generally to the background behind you, sometimes you'll actually find your face becoming part of the background as well. So this helps if you want to hide what's behind, perhaps you want to put a bit of corporate branding up, but it's still not as good as it could be. So on to the next. Now what I've done is I've switched over to my external webcam and you'll immediately be able to see a massive jump in the quality of the video that you can see. So again, I'll drop the link to this below. This allows you a couple of different things. First of all, obviously the video quality is that much better. It's a much, much higher quality output, um, provides a 1080p HD output, so good high quality. And importantly, if you're using this with a laptop, it means that you can tilt the laptop screen to an angle that's comfortable for you to, to look at and uh, to be able to read the content because having the laptop screen completely vertical feels odd. Um, but it means you can tip the laptop screen back, but then you can adjust the angle of the external webcam so that it's pointing directly at you. The other benefit is, well, because it's on the top of the laptop, it's that little bit higher as well. I don't have to push my laptop up and put it up on quite such high boxes. Um, if I'm just using this on my dining room table as I am here, the camera is a little bit lower than eye level, but that's, that's okay. I know often the recommendation is to have the camera a bit higher and looking down on you. I, I understand the reasons for that. So you're sort of tilting your chin up and your eyes are a little bit more open and that's all valid advice. 
but it does mean if you actually want to type on your laptop or take notes or anything like that, that's not really very convenient because you kind of up like this if it's up on a box. So personally, I don't. Um, but you can now see, you'll still see some of that artifacting with the virtual background, but the quality of me is better. I've still got the issue with this side lighting. Um, so this is my, as you saw, my patio doors there, so the natural light coming in. So I've got quite a bit of still shadowing on here. So now I'm just going to move around a little bit further. Um, and actually just as an aside, I've got um, my uh, stepdaughter in the kitchen actually at the sink uh, running the, the water. That's absolutely fine because this headset has a noise cancelling microphone. You won't be able to hear that or very little of it anyway. I've now moved around to my normal position, uh, uh, sitting at the dining table. And you can see now I've got even light. So I've got the light coming through the patio doors in front of me, but I'm still just using the uh, the normal setting within Zoom for people that don't have a green screen background. But what you'll be able to see now I've moved is that this is no longer a white wall behind me. And if I turn the virtual background itself off, you'll actually be able to see what's there. And this is nothing expensive. So yes, it's a green screen sheet, but as you can probably see, this is actually just hung in front of some glass doors. So this isn't a solid wall. This would work even better if it was a solid wall. And if I move to one side, because I've got the windows in the lounge and also the room light in the lounge, you can actually see the light bleeding through the cloth. It's not particularly thick. Um, I know where to sit to, to sort of minimize that effect, but as it gets later in the day and the sun gets around, it does get quite bright and you start to see it bleeding through uh, here. But having the green screen, if I just turn the virtual uh, background back on and go back to that one, um, Without ticking the I have a green screen option, you'll still see the, the green here. Now watch what happens if I do actually tick that uh, green screen option. So it does that. Now, if I do this, you'll see a little bit of the artifacting, but if I do that, you get a tiny little bit of green halo, but very little, it becomes much, much more convincing. Now, the virtual background stuff is very sensitive to the amount of light that you have. So sitting here, I've actually got a good amount of natural light coming in from in front of me. Um, the green screen, however, doesn't have too much light on it. Um, there is, as you can see here, still light coming through. Um, if you've got this case, then if my wife wasn't working in the other room, I would go in there and I would shut the curtains and just make the other side of this dark. Obviously, ideally, hang it on a solid wall. I don't have room to do that in my house. I don't have a dedicated office space. I'm simply sitting in my dining room to be able to do this. But this piece of green screen cloth, people go, oh, that's expensive. Less than 10 pounds, 10, 10 pounds sterling off Amazon. I know they're more expensive at the moment. Anything to do with kind of video calling and stuff from home, the prices have gone through the roof. But when I bought this, less than £10, it's got a piece of dowling that I bought from a local DIY store uh, through the, the pocket on the end of it. And I've got a couple of the clear plastic command hooks, the sticky ones that you can just stick to the wall and then take off without causing damage, just to hold that green screen sheet. And that hangs there behind me. That cheap green screen sheet combined with the I have a green screen option in Zoom and a virtual background and good lighting. And this is just natural lighting. I haven't got any room lights or anything else on at the moment. Really does create a good effect. Now, if you want to go one step further, I do actually for when things get a bit darker, if I'm doing this at night, I do have an LED light panel and I'm just going to turn that on as well. So now I've got the LED light panel. It's off at about a 45 degree to me and it's up a little bit higher uh, as well. So I've turned it up quite bright so you can see a little bit of shadows in here. Something like that. So if it was dark, then that just provides a little bit of extra illumination. Um, comes with a, a couple of filters. Again, I'll drop the link to this below. Um, I've got it just on a standard camera tripod and uh, it's got a diffuser box on the front of it as well. Again, I'll put that in the link. 
you don't need to have sort of LED light panels, honestly, just a desk lamp or an LED lamp or something like that. You don't want it too bright. If it's something you can adjust the intensity of, that's great. But just to give you a bit of lighting and before you start the call, just check, you know, start the video, check your own video settings. Just make sure you are framed nicely so you don't have too much space above your head. Your lighting's good. And if you are going to use a virtual background, test it ahead of time, as I say lighting and contrast to your background make a uh, make a big difference as to how well that actually works but now if you think about where this started with me using my laptop microphone sitting in front of a bright light source to now good even lighting i'm using an external webcam to give me good video i'm using a headset to give me good clear audio and my uh, stepdaughter's been in there at the kitchen actually several times during the course of recording this I've got the, the dining room door open, so I haven't even shut the door into the kitchen. The kitchen is literally next door to me and it was quite noisy. You will have heard very, very little of that. And um, if you want to go get a green screen, there's lots of different options available. Um, just go and Google them. It depends how much you want to spend. You don't spend anything from as little as £10 to, you know, hundreds of pounds if you want to do green screens, uh, green screen setups. But this isn't even perfect. This is cloth. It's wrinkled. It's a bit dusty. Uh, you know, this is not a perfect green screen setup. But the combination of it now, if you imagine that you just come onto a call and you were talking to me like this, I've had quite a few people go, oh, is, is that your house or where, where are you? People assume it's actually real background until I point out that it's not, it's virtual. Um, and sometimes I'll turn the virtual background off and just show them the green screen. I call it, you know, going in, you know, going in front of the screen rather than going behind the screen. Um, I hope that has been helpful. I hope it really illustrates the difference that you can make just with some simple adjustments, a little bit of extra kit. Um, and again, going back to what I said at the start of this, I need my kit to be versatile. I need it to be portable. I need to be able to use it anywhere. So whether I am making calls and working from home or I'm working from company office or I'm working from a client office or I'm working from a coffee shop, I can use the, the sort of kit that I've got here. I do have one alternative headset that I wear if I'm doing longer, uh, longer calls or I'm going to be on all day. Again, I'll drop the link in for that. But again, it's got the all important noise cancelling microphone. Uh, and with that, I'm good to go. I can do calls from anywhere, really. And they will look, not, won't necessarily have the virtual background, but the video quality, the audio quality that people will get, I can do it from anywhere. It's tremendously liberating to have that freedom. And as I say, you know, it's worth doing, especially in times like we have now. I hope that advice has been useful and I hope that I will see you for the next video. Take care.